All right, everybody, it's Eddie J on crypto. Let's really dig in. So did some more research, um, listened to some news, read some articles, all that good stuff. When you look at the Silicon Valley bailout, it's not quite the normal bailout. It's more like a liquidity uh, savior coming into town, right? Us, the citizens of the United States, will buy back the bonds that they currently own that, that are worth about 95%, right? We'll give them 100%. We'll most likely hold these bonds until, you know, they come to term and then we will let it go and get all our money back. So I don't think that's quite the normal bailout. However, Credit Suisse is actually getting bailed out by the Swiss National Bank. They're getting a cash infusion of $54 billion. That's actually kind of a big deal. All right. Especially when you look at the history of Credit Suisse. OK, in 2014, they were found guilty of helping U.S. citizens evade taxes. Then last year, 2022, that was in 2014, and in 2022, they had to pay $234 million, right? Because they needed to get rid of a tax probe by France. So you're dumping $54 billion into Credit Suisse? Saudi Arabia said they wouldn't, so... But they have a lot of money tied up in Credit Suisse, so they're looking, you know, that's part of the people that are looking for a bailout. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. It's not my country. It's not my bank. I don't have any ties to Credit Suisse. I don't have any holdings in Credit Suisse. I'm not holding any stock or anything like that. Um, but when I look at how banks around the world are taken care of and I look at how com countries around the world are trying to stamp out crypto, especially here in the United States, and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, you have to stop and think, well, wow. So anything that goes back to giving the people control over their own funds and assets is bad. Put all your money in banks that the governments can control. Good. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just going to leave it there for you. Um, the U.S. government is pretty sneaky. Here's, what, here's what's going on. Tom Emmer, he is the House Majority Whip, released a letter. He put it out on Twitter. Um, he sent the letter over to, I think it was the FDIC, accusing the U.S. government of trying to crush crypto in the country. And the reason why he's saying that is because whoever gets to buy the assets of Signature Bank, Signature Bank, not Silicon Valley, of Signature Bank, they will have to dump all of the crypto business that the bank currently does. Now, why is that such a big deal? It's a big deal because the FDIC stepped in and took over the bank, or New York regulators and eventually the FDIC stepped in to take over the bank. But think about this. The bank was not insolvent. They just didn't have faith in management, so they say. That's pretty weak, don't you think? That's really, really a weak argument. So when I look at that, I sit back and I kind of go, yeah, they're trying to stamp out crypto. Um, and, and, and you can see what's going on. So in the second, in the second try for um, selling assets for Silicon Valley Bank and f the first try for selling assets of Signature Bank, you're going to have to have your bids in by Friday. We'll see who actually bids for it, given that the U.S. government is saying, well, you got to get out of crypto. You know, for that bank, they got to get out of crypto. That's that's a big problem. That really is a big problem. I think it's going to play out exactly as I've been saying it's going to play out. You're going to see a whole swath of crypto firms leave the United States. And then they're going to go someplace else, do whatever it is they want to do. And most of those firms are going to be on the up and up. But some of those firms are possibly going to wind up being another FTX. Now, stop and think about that. You do not want to inter, you know, inter, you know, introduce regulation that means something, right? And you want to stamp out innovation all in the midst of everything blowing up in the banking industry, not just in the United States. But around the world, bank in, in banking industry is suffering. And this is what you want to do. Oh, that makes sense. So with all of that turmoil, 
the current crypto winter. Anchorage Digital is saying, you know what, we got to lay off 20% of our staff. We really don't know what's going on. Oh, okay, that's cool. So banks are not going to be able to easily onboard, off board, you know, on ramp, off ramp, you know, fiat for crypto, that kind of thing. Great, that's awesome. You're just going to see more places accept crypto as payment. That's really what's going to wind up happening. And you're going to keep pushing. The more the governments around the world squeeze, the more crypto slips out. And I'm just saying that be prepared for it because I can see it coming. I can definitely see that coming. You want to choke out crypto from your country. Why? I don't know. And well, we do know. And your banking industry is failing or at least part of your banking industry is failing. Oh, that's that's going to bode well on the street. That that makes sense. The U.S. government needs to get get their act together, you know, just step it up a bit. I want to see what happens when Tom Emmer's letter gets, you know, responded to. That's going to be interesting because what excuse do you have? And you're forcing out innovation. You're forcing innovation to leave. And I don't understand that. And electronically, you're not going to stop crypto. Get yourself a VPN here, a VPN there, and you're trading crypto like nobody's business. Somebody's going to set up a, a, a mailbox store in some crypto friendly country. You'll be able to buy a mailbox, be in the country and pass KYC or AML and have your crypto. Yay. Good job. I don't know. I just don't know. Coinbase is about to delist six coins after their review. Right. And you, and you know what? They're not wrong in delisting these coins. They're, you know, they, they go through their normal process. But I think with all of the regulatory concern, it becomes big news because, well, regulators don't know how to actually manage the situation. So here are the, here are the coins that they're delisting. Um, and obviously stopping trading, all that good stuff, beginning March 29th. It's going to be Rally, DFI Money, Mirror, OMG Network, Loom Network, and Augur. Again, March 29th. Obviously, each one of those projects took a nosedive. Truth be told, I've never heard of them, so I'm not hurting about it, right? I mean, I do research on the coins that, have, that I have interest in. They're doing something, there's utility, there's community, there's development, there's just stuff going on that makes me say, yes, I'm interested in these coins and I do a deeper dive research project for each one. And then I decide if I'm going to, you know, invest in that or not, if I'm going to use that or not, that's my big deal. But I don't like, I don't like to end on bad notes. I like to end on positive notes. And here's something positive. Salesforce is introducing, they're doing a soft, I call it a soft launch or limited launch of some Web3 services. And one of them in particular, I find to be mad cool. Which one? The idea of managing NFT loyalty programs, because I think that's going to be a big deal. And you can see that it's a big deal because, I don't know, Starbucks has made it a big deal. Starbucks has gotten out there, done it, and they're showing everybody there is promise. There is promise to having such a loyalty program. And I'm all about it. I'm not a Starbucks fan, but I'm all about that business move, getting closer to your customers. That's what I like. Anyway, you know what we should do? We should probably get to the numbers. And the numbers are looking not bad, kind of looking solid. When you really think about it, the numbers really are looking sideways. Let's just refresh, you know, my top 25 winners and losers um, in the past 24 hours. So if you look at this, who am I looking at? Bone Swap took a dive, 13%. You want to know why? Because apparently there was a, you know, there was a snafu with the Shibarium code, and that's why Bone is taking a nosedive. I'm pretty sure this can, this is going to most likely wind up being shown as a buying opportunity. Who else is out there that I'm paying attention to? Do, 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 do. Filecoin down 9%. Helium down 8%. Um, like I said, OMG Network, they took a hit 6%. They're, 
they just got dropped. Aptos, good project, 6% down. Kusama, good project, 5% down. Optimism, 5% down. Hedera, 5% down. Engine, down 5% down. Um, Harmony, down 5%. And Avalanche, down 5%. These are all good, strong projects. Remember my 5% rule. I don't pay attention to you unless you're doing a, at least 5% of a move. And these could be little little, little dips where you can get in, make a couple of bucks, get out when it's popped up and over on this list again. Kind of a big deal. You know, Bitcoin being up 2%, to me, that's a lateral move. Not a big deal, but it's over 25, 25 grand right now. So that's something I would be paying attention to. Who else over here? Let's see, in the 5% range. Boom. Uh, immutable X up 5%. Wow, that's actually pretty good. I think they were up yesterday. Um, who else am I paying attention to? Nobody else on that list am I paying attention to. Singul singularity, net, 3% lateral, BNB lateral. You know, so those are the things that I pay attention to. What's up next? Again, 65, yesterday was 62. Today it's 65,000 ETH that are off the market, burned. That's it deflationary pay attention to this it's going to get better um don't have to worry about that fear and greed index is currently at 52 we're at 50 today defi llama we're at 66 billion in total value locked that's actually really good um let's take a look at the at bitcoin and the big picture again still above that 23417 number and still playing with the 25 to 10 number that I keep telling you about. We have to maintain above those marks in order to see more positive growth. Right now, we're not getting that huge positive growth, but I think there's another pop that's going to happen. And the reason why I say so is because where are you going to put your money, right? I have enough money in the bank to pay my bills on a, on a regular basis, right? Beyond that, I'm putting my money to work. It's the, the money's in assets. So real estate, businesses, and of course, crypto. That's what I'm doing with my money. That's just me. Um, looking at a bigger picture, you know, I go through this every day. I got to find a new spot because this is, you know, Coin 360 loading up is a major problem. It's it's not it's not fun when it does this. It takes forever for this page to load. It's, it's not cool, guys. You got to get it together. Just really. Um, BDC, like I said, playing toying with twenty five thousand again. Still have to. We have to get to a point where we're above twenty five to ten if we plan on seeing thirty thousand anytime soon. So until we can again, until we can get to that 25 to you know sustain above that 25 to 10 number the same way that we have to sustain above that 23 417 number we're not going to see 30. it'll be if if we did it would be a blip right i'm not looking for blips i'm looking for you know maintain pop maintain pop that's what i'm looking for I'm looking kind of like a stare up kind of move not necessarily pops and drops because they're hard to manage um, looking across the board from a, from a numeric perspective, this is what I'm seeing, right? Looking at the year to date, because it's only March, looking at the year to date, I sit back and I go, wow, some of these coins are still doing very, very well. Again, pay attention to all of these, the 20, the one hour, 24 hour day, 30 day, 90 day, and year to date. Why? Because each set of numbers will give you a different story on for each coin, as well as all of the numbers combined will give you a different picture for each coin. You can start to see trends. You can start to see ups and downs. You can see start to understand what kind of news hits and has a pop. This is the, these are the kinds of things that I try to teach myself as I continue along this journey. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. If you have any questions, do me a favor, drop a note to me, and I'll try to do the research because I like to learn and I like to share my research. Have a good one. Bye-bye.